to another video. I finally saw Dune last night in IMAX and oh my gosh, I have been looking forward to this movie for months. I, I haven't been this excited for a movie since The Force Awakens came out. It did not disappoint. After the movie ended, I was just so overwhelmed with feelings, emotions, opinions, thoughts. I think I just rambled for about two hours straight. I've just been thinking about the movie nonstop since I saw it. I think I finally have concluded some of these opinions and put them into actual words instead of just stammering and fangirling the entire movie. Before I actually get into the video, I do want to say a couple of things. First off, you are completely entitled to your own opinion. Every big movie like this is going to just have so many different opinions and thoughts. You're completely entitled to think whatever you want to think about this movie. These are just some of my opinions and my impressions. Just wanted to put that out there. If you disagree with me, I have no problem with that. Secondly, my opinions and thoughts are coming from someone who has read Dune. I genuinely think it is like a masterpiece. I just adore the book and it definitely impacted how I viewed this movie. Just wanted to get those couple of things out of the way. I, I don't even know where to start on how I feel about this movie. I genuinely think that this is the most beautiful movie that I have ever seen. Every single shot was stunning. Stunning. I, I'm not even exaggerating when I say that probably through about 70% of the movie, I literally had chills. Like I was, I just kept looking down at my arm and I literally had goosebumps from how unbelievably beautiful this movie is. Like I cannot overstate how stunning it looks in, in just every aspect from the design of the spaceships to costume design to the actual cinematography shots that made it to the screen. And the fact that I saw it in IMAX, so you get to see so much more of the frame. I mean, it was just mind-blowing. I, this is a little extreme, I know, but I shed a tear in the first two minutes of the movie just because of how beautiful it was. I knew that because Denis Villeneuve is like the master at crafting these beautiful movies, I knew that it was going to be visually stunning, but I was just so amazed at the opening sequence that <laughs> my little movie heart just just shed a tear for how beautiful it was and honestly the entire movie was that way even if you didn't enjoy the content i don't know how you could have a valid opinion that this movie was not gorgeous you are completely entitled to your own opinion because it, it just was. When it comes down to the actual content, I was so surprised that the movie followed so closely to the book. I mean, as a book lover, I think we usually hope that the movie will follow as closely to the book as possible because we love the source material and we want the movie to respect it. It followed so closely that I kind of knew what scenes were coming next. And for me, I absolutely loved that because I am such a huge fan of the book. So seeing it translated so well to a movie format was just amazing like chef's kiss i absolutely loved it that was one of the things about this movie that stood out to me so immensely was i could just feel the passion and the love for this source material from Denis Villeneuve, it was just tangible. Even in interviews, he said that he read this book when he was like 13 or 14, and it has been a dream of his throughout his entire career to make this movie. And I just think that that was so utterly clear that this is a passion project for him because there, there were just so many things throughout the movie that were in reference to the book or just done with such reverence that it was just so clear that he wanted to do this book justice. I just really think that all books should be adapted that way by someone who is just so passionate about what they're making and I think that it was so clear that that was the case with this movie. And also the acting in this movie was so incredibly well done. I, I was so impressed by so many different performances. The one that stands out to me the most is just Timothy Chalamet. I just think that he is like the absolute perfect casting for Paul Atreides. I was captivated every single scene that he was in. He just exuded that whole personality so well for me. But then the second performance that really stood out to me was Oscar Isaac as Leto. Oh my gosh. L Leto was not only one of my favorite characters in the book, but I just think that Oscar Isaac did such an incredible job in his performance of him that it was just so believable that he is he's the leader of House Atreides, but he's also just so respected for his kindness to his people, the strength that he portrays, but also the gentleness to his family, to Paul, and then also to Jessica. The line, like his greatest regret in life is that he didn't make her his 
wife. I'm so glad that they included that because that was one of my favorite things in that first part of the book anyways and I was just so impressed by that performance. I mean it's Oscar Isaac. I knew it was going to be incredible but he just portrayed that character so well. It was one of the highlights of the movie for me. The casting choice that I was probably the most skeptical on was actually Jessica because she's just such an integral part of the book and if she wasn't super great then I think it would have been a big negative for the movie because she just kind of is this thread through the entire narrative and is just so key to so much of the plot. So the fact that she was so incredible, I was one relieved and two so excited for part two because she plays a much larger role in the second half of the book. I mean everybody in this movie was excellent from Duncan Idaho to Gurney to Chani. I mean even though she was only in it for 20 minutes or something, she's gonna be amazing. I'm, I'm just so looking forward to this next movie with her in it because she was great. I mean, Zendaya, I, I freaking love her. I don't know how she's just killing it recently, but she is and she was so good in just the little part that she was in. So I'm so excited for her to play Chani in the next movie, especially since she'll be a larger role in it as well. Also, another one that I was a little bit skeptical on was Batista. <laughs> I was a little bit skeptical if he would actually be believable because I really was worried that he would be somewhat comedic, but he was so good. I mean, so imposing, very terrifying. I, I just think that he did an excellent job portraying the cruelty. I was just also very glad that even though he wasn't in the movie very much, that he didn't kind of turn anything into a joke. That was not the case at all. And then Liette Kynes, oh, so good. Even the, the short amount of time that she had on screen, I thought was incredibly captivating and she just did such a great job. And I, I liked the, the change of her death as well. It was just, it was minor, but it played much better on screen the way that she died and so epic. Just the rhythm, oh my gosh. <laughs> I definitely got goosebumps there too. I, I'm telling you, I loved this movie so much. Ugh. So one of the things that I really loved about this movie is that there was very little hand holding. As someone who knows the source material, it was really easy to follow. But for people who haven't read Dune and don't know what it's about, I think that there was enough exposition to follow what was going on. But I personally love movies that trust the viewer, trust them to be following along and to pick up on the things that are said, that are shown. I love those kind of movies and I'm really glad that this was one of them because I think that this movie easily could have turned into just exposition dump because there's so much world building that has to either be done through dialogue or visuals that could sometimes be overplayed in dialogue and I'm just so glad that this movie didn't try to hold the viewer's hand and allowed them to just watch this movie unfold and possibly be a bit confusing at times but on a rewatch it would make more sense and I think that a lot of Denis Villeneuve's movies kind of lend themselves to that style anyways, especially with a movie like Arrival that is just absolutely brilliantly done, does not hold your hand, has an amazing plot twist at the end, and it really benefits from a second watch so you can just fully appreciate everything and pick up on the things that maybe you missed the first time around. I think that this movie also does that really well in that it lays out what you need, but on a second watch, you would pick up on some of those other things that maybe you missed and it would just make sense a second Second time. I loved that about the movie and definitely saw that more as a positive so that it wasn't relying on so much exposition. So the thing about this movie that I've heard uh, some negativity on is the ending. Like the last third-ish of the movie just kind of drops in pacing for some people. I personally didn't find that to be the case. As, as you guys know, I like slow moments with movies, books, because I just think that it allows you to be more immersed and just soak in what is happening. And th the last bit of this movie did drop off in pacing. You know, it's, it's really interesting because uh, when we came out of the movie, my husband was saying that he was totally invested in the entire movie and then it just got a little bit on the boring side at the end and he kind of referred to it as just the, the third act dropped off for him. When he said that, 
it just got me thinking. It's really not a third act and that's the thing about this movie. It's not really a traditional first, second, and third act movie. And I actually watched a review from someone who hasn't read Dune but said that this movie didn't feel like it was a third act but it really just felt like a whole first act. Act. I found that so interesting from someone who hasn't read Dune because that's that's pretty much what this movie is. This movie pretty much encompasses the first third of the book and a little bit more. Like it's not even really half of the book. It really is the first third plus a little bit more. And it really got me thinking that for someone who is seeing this movie for the first time and doesn't know the story, the ending probably will be a negative for them because it does kind of seem like it drops off and I don't know how it could have been done differently to where that wasn't the case. I mean, opposed to just ending it early, but the thing is there's so much that still has to happen in this book. So I understand the creative choice to kind of end it there, but maybe it could have gone on a little bit further and where he kind of meets the, the Freeman and then ending the movie a little bit more at the halfway point. I don't really know how I feel about it because for me, I really loved the way that it kind of ended and it just gave a little taste to what's to come because the the, the second half of the book is all in the desert and I loved that it at least went to that point to just give a little taste of the Freeman and how the next part is going to go because that is like the soul of this book is the desert. I'm so glad that we got a little bit of it in this movie so I don't want that part to go away at all. Maybe just going a little bit further so that it's a bit better of a stopping point. We saw House of Trudy's Fall and that is the ending climax to Act 1 and we got a little bit of a taste of Act 2 and I am just so hyped to see the rest of it. Putting that out there that is going to be I think a really contentious point for a lot of people. And kind of to that point I think it's really going to make this movie difficult for me to place in my top movies because I think when I first came out of the theater I was ready to like put this at the freaking top like I loved it that much but after thinking about it a little bit more I really think I need to see the next movie to determine the placement of this movie because it did feel like it was leading into the next movie and just not complete and it's not supposed to be like it's a part one but for me to fully have a complete opinion I feel like I need to have the complete story and the complete narrative. Like I can't put this on my top three movies of all time without the second part. It's like with Lord of the Rings. I can pick a favorite movie from the trilogy but I can't just put one movie on a favorites movie list because it's it's the incomplete story. I mean it, I have to put the Lord of the Rings. Like it has to be the Lord of the Rings. It can't just be the Return of the King or it can't just be the Fellowship. I mean it's a complete thing for me. The Lord of the Rings is like all of them together. It's going to be a similar thing for me I think for Dune that I just need the other one to be able to say that Dune is one of my favorite movies of all time and that just kind of incorporates both of them. So that's just kind of where I am at this point. I just need to see the next movie and if it's as good as this first installment it will easily be in one of the top five movies of all time for me. Possibly even higher. Of course I forgot a couple of things that I wanted to add. First off the voice was so well done and it could have so easily come across really cheesy or dumb. Holy crap it was actually actually freaking terrifying and really displayed the power that the Bene Gesserits have. And I just think that they did a really good job on that. And then just the overall Bene Gesserit were so epic. I think that they really came across intimidating and really seemed like these people kind of pulling strings in the background. That's like one of my favorite things about Dune is all of like the political machinations and scheming that kind of goes on behind the scenes and the Bene Gesserits play a huge part in that, especially with all of the prophecies on Arrakis and I just think that they were so well done because they were very mysterious but kind of terrifying. I just think it really could have easily gone a different way. And then also the score in this movie was just exceptional. Like the music separated this movie from so many other sci-fi and action movies that I've seen just because of the sheer epicness of some of these scenes. Like what would have been like a normal fight scene came across as something completely different because of the soundtrack. It elevated something so already amazing to something just absolutely spectacular. If it had like a normal soundtrack that was just kind of forgettable, I don't think it would have 
had the full impact that it really did, but it played such an integral part on the suspense or more tense moments that made it truly something spectacular. I could not just include that in my review because that was one of my big takeaways from the movie. But anyways, I'll get back to the regular video. So just final thoughts. I was completely in awe of this film. I genuinely think it is a masterpiece of cinema. Please, please go see it in IMAX if you can. I mean, I know that not everyone has access to an IMAX, but this is one of those movies that just doesn't come around very often. And I think it 100% deserves a theater viewing. Even if it's just a normal theater, it deserves it. It is that good. Honestly, it may be my favorite IMAX viewing ever. I think the only one that can come close to it is Avatar when, that, when I saw that in IMAX. But this movie, please see it in IMAX. If you can't, just please see it in IMAX. I'm begging you, it was unbelievable. So that's pretty much most of my thoughts on this movie. Again, this is completely subjective. You can totally disagree with me on anything that you want. If you don't agree, I would love to know why, <laughs> but be nice about it, please. I am so excited for the next part. Holy crap. Thank you so much for watching. I genuinely appreciate the fact that you would watch a video like this. I would love to know what you thought about the movie if you saw it and your opinions in the comments below. I hope you have a great week. Hope you enjoy the movie and I will see you in the next one. See ya.